<laughs> just just so you can read it first. Well, hello, denizens of the internet, or as Google Live Translate says, denizens of the internet. And, and I'm not purposely ignoring you, denizens of the internet. You are very important, although I encounter very few of you in my comments. If, if there are any denizens out there who watch my channel, please drop me a comment. And um, to those who have unsubscribed from this channel because you thought it was only for Dennis's, rest assured that it is not. It is for every diverse denizen out there. You are all accepted here at Call Me Chato. Uh, purposely misspelled names like Carl with a Q does bother me. But I know that's not your fault. You were probably an in vitro baby and your parents ran a natural supplement store. Just change it, for God's sakes. Anyway, uh, that was a bit of a tangent. I wanted to talk about the 1993 Demolition Man movie starring Sylvester Stallone and Wesley Snipes that I just watched for the first time the other day. It was um, fun, silly. It was a silly movie that did one thing, New Trek, or Kurtzman Trek, has never managed to do, and that is envision a future. What an odd thing for me to say, you say. Discovery in Strange New Worlds has spaceships, phaser guns, and transporters, and aliens. We have nothing like that now. I, I, I don't think. All of those things are just holdovers from OG Trek. It's lazy shorthand that ignores the reason for OG Trek's existence and longevity. OG Trek was all about gear porn, as I like to call it. They had a visionary future tech we all know, like phasers, transporter, tablets, biobed in sickbay, a vaccination without the pokey thing, tricorder, communicator, shuttle, force field, miniskirts. Okay, sorry, uh, not, not the last thing. Not that it wasn't appreciated. When I was uh, watching Demolition Man, it was fun to see all the things they did to make us believe we were watching something from 2032, which uh, then reminded me of just how wretchedly awful Kurtzman Trek is and how little they did to imagine the 23rd century, how stunningly incurious the writers on that vomit opus were. Of course, it all started with J.J. Abrams' re-envisioning of Star Trek as more Star Wars and less thoughtful science fiction. Let's not forget that Gene Roddenberry had hired real science fiction writers to come up with ideas and scripts. And, and things they could steal from. That was all ditched for the glitzy nonsense that was J.J. Abrams' Trek, which only got worse under Everyone is Gay Kurtzman Trek, where the only things that are explored were feelings. A very dark Trek, actually, with no science fiction and no gear porn. It did nothing to transport me to a different world in time, which is a weird thing to say, but I'll, I'll get back to that later. Now, let's let's take a look at the effort the producers and writers put into Demolition Man to accomplish what Kurtzman Trek couldn't or were just too stupid to do. If you haven't seen Demolition Man, I mean, it's an old movie, uh, this might spoil things for you if you're planning on watching it. So be warned! First uh, off, uh, in its present day, both criminals and overzealous police could be incarcerated through cryogenics and then reprogrammed while frozen. Then, uh, when we arrive in the future, it is so peaceful and crime-free that the police in outrageously stylistic uniforms have pretty much nothing to do except police bad language and the use of salt. There are ticketing stations everywhere that issues tickets if you swear, losing you a credit each time. Into this arrives an unfrozen psychopath, played by Wesley Snipes, who runs roughshod through this kingdom of pussy cops. But I, I digress. There is the way the police talk to each other, hilariously polite and unlike any police we know. We also learn there is no toilet paper. The cars look very futuristic, even by today's standards, have a self-driving mode. The police are armed only with shock batons. The eyewear in it is, is unique and stylized. The hit songs that everyone listens to are old commercial jingles. The boardroom was just flat screen kiosks where each chair would be you know, the kiosk that rotated towards whomever was talking. That looked very cool. 
tracking chips were embedded into uh, the arms of the entire population, why wouldn't all military personnel on Utrecht be embedded with tracking chips? Next Gen reduced the communicator to their uh, to a lapel pin, pay me up. Uh, that was a nice upgrade, but I mean, why wouldn't future soldiers of the future be embedded with tracking chips? I remember as a kid that I loved the bio bed in Bones Sick Bay with its memorable beep boop boop sounds. I also really liked the needle-free vaccination device because uh, I, I had an abject fear of needles. And how does Kurtzman Trek envision the future? It tells us that none of our existing social problems were solved in the far future and enlists the most self-centered, emotionally uh, impoverished, psychologically broken, gender-confused crew and sticks them on a multi-trillion, trillion, trillion dollar space vessel to weep through large tracts of space while exhibiting the worst road rage. I stopped watching after season two. Other than the tortured space creature that let them space jump, what? great new gear porn was introduced on Disco, Strange New Worlds, or Picard. God damn it, the Jeffries tube was actually a thing in OG Trek. We all knew what it was. We knew it was not the favorite place for Scotty to go to, to fix the thing that would help the thing to do the thing at the last possible minute, because that was where the thing was done. Could you even imagine a meeting of Kurtzman Trek writers, sycophants, discussing the cool tech on OG Trek and what could they do to upgrade or innovate it? It, it was really only ever about the diversity, equity, inclusivity nonsense. And based on what's happening now, um, I'm fairly certain that that would have been extinguished by the time Disco took flight anyway. Ironic that. And to answer the question I posed earlier, Flashy special effects, people in rubber prosthetics, are not enough to make me believe that your show is taking place in the future. The Expanse was far better in this regard. It requires many big and small things to fashion something that feels of a different time. Logan's Run did it. Hell, even Woody Allen's Sleeper did a better job than Kurtzman Trek. The 1993 Demolition Man proved that if you try really hard, have passion, intellect, and any kind of talent, you can make a believable future, or at the very least, an entertaining one. Another reason I feel robbed. Till next time, Dennis, be seeing you.